Hey everyone, Fear Crawler here. Welcome to the video. You guys are in for a real treat today because we're going to be doing something a little different. Today's video is going to be on one of my favorite topics as well as mini crawlers Batman. I guess we'll just get into this one. Enjoy the video, everybody. I remember being in my young teenage years. I was always dreaming about becoming Batman. Me and my two friends were avid comic book readers, and we loved superheroes. It didn't matter if it was from DC Comics or Marvel. My friend Harold wanted to be Professor Xavier from X-Men, and my friend Martin wanted to be Spider-Man. We all used to dress up and pretend that we were those superheroes. I remember at that age we actually believed that the three of us would become superheroes. It's amazing how an imaginative mind can make a boring world become so much more than what it is. I remember entering adulthood with a sense of boredom when the realization came that my childhood was nothing more than just fantasy. It was a depressing moment in my life, and it took some time for me to adapt to the adult world. I wished that I could always be a child, or to relive my childhood years, even though there was one traumatic moment in my childhood which has always stayed in my mind. It all started on one particular sunny day. Harold called me and Martin excitedly and asked us to come outside. We both met up with him at a large park. Harold had this look of excitement on his face, and we kept on urging him to tell us what was making him so happy. I remember Harold reaching out his arms towards a rock, and with my own eyes, I saw the rock begin floating in the air. Harold was somehow controlling it with his mind. Martin and I couldn't believe it, and hell yes, we were both feeling jealous. Harold continued showing off his teleconnect powers by moving more objects. He was just like Professor Xavier. I mean, it was a dream come true for all of us. At that moment, it was the best part of my childhood, to see something from the comics coming true in real life. I wanted a power of my own, but I remembered Batman didn't have any powers. I thought maybe I could somehow work on my fighting skills, but I hadn't the faintest idea of how to fight, or even where to learn how to fight. We both kept asking Harold about his newfound abilities. What were the chances of him suddenly being exactly like his favorite superhero, Charles Xavier? All Harold told us was that he really wanted to be like him. One morning he was practicing moving objects with his mind, something that he had always done but repeatedly failed at. But on that particular morning, he actually moved something. I mean, yeah, Martin and I were jealous. But at the same time, if Harold could be like his favorite superhero, then perhaps so could the both of us. I actually did manage to take some martial arts classes after finding a place. I was trying to get fit and strong at the same time, but the place was basically a dead-end karate club. Martin started collecting weird and creepy-looking spiders. He had hoped that they would bite him and turn him into Spider-Man. After a month of trying to be more like Batman and failing, Harold came to give me some advice. Bruce Wayne was rich, and so I would need money to be like him. Harold said that he would steal money from me using his powers and make me rich, so more like Batman. We went out to the shops, and I watched Harold as he used his mind to knock out the shopkeepers and empty out the cash register. Even though I appreciated his help, I still didn't feel like Batman, because stealing money isn't what Batman would do. I felt bad for the shopkeepers. I felt guilty. I felt wrong. Harold urged me to take the money and start buying equipment and gear like Batman. I tried telling Harold about how wrong his idea was, but he kept telling me to man up. He said that if I truly wanted to be a superhero, I would have to push myself. He told me that in the comics, Bruce Wayne did learn the ways criminals operated by joining their gangs, so I guess he was making sense. Meanwhile, Martin was bit by spiders so many times that it only landed him in the hospital, 
and nowhere close to becoming Spider-Man. Harold had come up with another idea about how he could make me more like Batman. Batman's parents were dead, and it's the death of Batman's parents that made him the way he is. I started freaking out when I considered where he was going with this. Harold was actually telling me that with the death of my parents, I could be exactly like Batman. Harold would be willing to use his mind powers to kill my parents, and regrettably, I agreed. I was so desperate to be like Batman that I was willing to sacrifice my own parents. I led Harold into my house while my parents were making something to eat for the both of us. Harold went into the kitchen and gave me a thumbs up, meaning he was going to go through with it. In that moment, I did want to stop it from happening, but the idea of being Batman was far too great. All I heard was a slicing sound followed by two hard thumps on the floor. When I went into the kitchen, both my parents were dead. They had been stabbed in the head. Harold looked at me confused and he told me I wanted to snap their necks, not stab them in their brains. Harold's mind powers seemed to have disobeyed him for some odd reason. For a whole day, my parents lay dead in the kitchen. Somehow by the following morning, their bodies had disappeared. Martin was now out of the hospital, and we met Harold in the forest. He began testing his powers out on Martin by levitating him in the air. After what happened with my parents, I was now feeling devastated, and I was constantly crying. Harold could sense something was wrong. I was hoping to feel more like Batman, but... All I wanted to do was disappear. When Harold tried picking up Martin again using his mind, his neck had snapped instead. Harold had a frightful look on his face. He promised me that he didn't do that. Then Harold's neck suddenly twisted just like Martin's, and he fell lifeless to the ground. I came to the realization that Harold had never really had mind powers. Instead, some invisible being or person or some other force had been following him around and making it look like he had mind powers. It was manipulating him. I ran home and I phoned the police, telling them that my parents were missing, and so were my friends. My lies managed to help me cover up everything after moving in with my grandparents. I've always dreamed of becoming Batman. I miss pretending and playing around. I miss having all the time in the world and worrying about absolutely nothing. But sometimes, it's the greed of wanting to be something you're not that ruins everything you were. I know, right? That wasn't a Batman story at all. I mean, it seemed like his friend knew more about being Batman than he did. I have a few problems with this particular story. Problem number one, he didn't read up on Batman. If you want to be like Batman, you gotta read about him. Problem number two, he didn't even have a Batman costume. If you want to be like Batman, you gotta dress like Batman. This might say Black Panther on it, but underneath, Oh yeah, it's all Batman, baby. And problem number three? He didn't have any cool gadgets or gear or weapons like Batman. If you want to be like Batman, you gotta have some cool toys like him. Although, admittedly, the spring on this one is a little bit weak. So, I've modified this Nerf gun here to fire this glue stick. It may not be a Batarang, but it'll do. Allow me to demonstrate. Oh, oh God, oh, oh. You're going to jail, aren't you? Probably.